Podcasts are pretty common. So what makes the Uncommon Podcast uncommon? Well, it's all in our name. I'm your host, Noah Weiss, and we at Uncommon Sports Group understand the unique pressures and temptations that come with a career in the sport industry. We provide Uncommon training that helps you successfully navigate common challenges. Hit the follow button on this podcast. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Check out our website and become Uncommon. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Uncommon Podcast. I'm your host, Noah Weiss, and I'm excited to be joined by the head of basketball with Cerebro Sports, Derek Murray, to hear more about his journey through the sport industry and how he has navigated the many challenges that this industry so often brings. Derek, thanks for taking the time to join me today. Of course, man. Thanks for having me. It's always good to talk about uh, not only basketball, but how we got here. So I appreciate it very much. Absolutely, brother. And Derek, I think it'd be good to start by having you kind of share the purpose and mission of Cerebro Sports and what your role is with the organization. So as the head of basketball there, I oversee everything uh, we do uh, kind of domestically and internationally. So we believe in painting career profiles and career pictures of basketball players um, starting as young as possible. So we stat, we collect video and stat off of that video from high school, you know, 14, 15 U at the very beginning so that college teams and NBA teams are able to uh, get a real grasp on the real basketball kids as kids have played as early as possible. You know, sometimes NBA teams make decisions based on 35 to 45 game samples mm-hmm. of these uh, freshmen. And our goal is to make that anywhere from 75 to 100 um, right now in the classes of 25 and 26 high school. We have kids with, you know, 30, 40, 50 games already, and our goal is 200 by the time they they, uh, graduate high school. So just providing metrics on them, real numbers, paint pictures of their real skill and development, stuff like that. And Mm. we pair it with a scouting division as well. You know, numbers are what they are. They don't lie, but they're also not the entire picture. So we just kind of make a – our goal is to make a holistic view um, for both colleges and NBA teams to make good decisions. That's awesome, Derek. And. It's amazing because basketball has been a, a large part of your career, and it's been really, really awesome to hear your story previously over a phone call of just where you've been and where God has taken you. But I'd love to hear, why is basketball the sport you wanted to pursue, and how did you get your foot in the door into the industry? Yeah, a uh, pretty interesting story. So I grew up playing all sports, kind of like a lot of us did. Mm-hmm. Had surgery on both my knees in high school due to basketball, so it actually took me out of basketball pretty early competitively. Mm-hmm. and. I went to college as a baseball player. I signed the papers to be an industrial engineer uh, right before I graduated from uh, Lee University back in Tennessee. And I'll never forget going to the YMCA, going to go work out there at home. And I felt like God told me, like, no, you need to start applying for jobs. Like, you need to get back into sports. Hmm. Um, You know, podcast isn't the place for uh, for kind of the things I went through in college there that took me out of the game. I'm happy to discuss with anyone over the phone, but I kind of ran away from sports, if you will, just short version there. And I felt like I was like, nope, get back in. So Mm -hmm. job application after application, nobody was responding. And like two days before I graduated, the University of Texas Athletics Department called me back. So leave it to the biggest athletics department in the country to hire a uh, unqualified on paper guy from a small town in Tennessee. (laughs) Was there for about eight months, athletic director change. Um, my department of, Mm. you know, 30, 32 people was split up all over the country. And what's crazy is like, that's how my network grew exponentially, like less than one year out of college, you know, I'm in a department of 30 people and now we're all at different teams just overnight. Mm. So it's kind of nuts. Um, came to Oklahoma city to sell tickets in the season ticket, uh, retention department. Yeah. And I met the general manager, Sam Presti about two months in and it just kind of took off from there. So wow. a real, you know, God placed me here, placed me here, placed me there. Things I didn't understand what was going on um, until years later. But that's how I actually got into basketball or excuse me, back into basketball, if you will. Yeah. Um, pretty crazy. Absolutely, Derek. No, I appreciate you sharing. I think it's amazing, too, the ways that God can even motivate us to start pursuing a certain career path or, or career journey. So it's amazing that he opened those doors and made it possible for you to get back into the game. And you mentioned Sam Presti, which is a big name within the, with the basketball and the NBA at large. 
And you spent some time, obviously, with the Oklahoma City Thunder. And I'd love for you to share just the value of that experience with the Thunder, some things you learned, and kind of how you find your way into the NBA. You know, from a business perspective and a basketball perspective, looking back, I learned so much. You know, from a business office, um, you know, the ticket and retention and marketing sales department, you know, those guys, they taught me how to sell. They taught me how to create relationships from a business perspective, how to maintain them, um, taught me the ins and outs of everything from client retention to a CRM system, which, again, as I got older, I realized, oh, that's actually every aspect of life, if you will, no matter what part of business or a sport that you're in, Mm -hmm. it is all about relationships. And I learned how to cultivate those in the ticket office, which is always really interesting. You know, from the basketball side, Sam, um, the assistant GMs, Mark Dagnalt, who's now the Thunder head coach. When I met him, he was the head coach of the Blue. The G League team was very good to me, would let me come over and watch practice um, in the facility. And some of his assistant coaches are now Jarrell Christians, an assistant on the Celtics Mm -hmm. bench. Wow. And again, just guys I'm grateful for that kind of took the time to invest in me when I was, you know, on paper, a nobody. So mm-hmm. they taught me the basketball side, which I really respected and I'm very grateful for. But I think what often gets lost in when I have to tell my story very quickly is mm-hmm. that like, I'm grateful for the business office people, my bosses, the president, my the vice presidents who allowed me to pursue multiple things while also doing my job because they yeah. didn't have to do that. Yeah. They could have made me shut it down. They could have forced me to like, they had the right to do that mm-hmm. and they didn't. And they trusted me and allowed me basically, Hey, don't let it affect your job. Mm-hmm. And if your job performance doesn't slip, pursue what you'd like to on the side. And that's kind of how I was able to do it. So, you know, I have great respect and will always yeah. love the organization on both sides, which is pretty interesting. Cause I think very few people get to see both sides of like mm-hmm. an NBA team. Yeah, absolutely. Derek. And a question I was processing as you were talking is, you know, I think so often we can get to these roles like being in the NBA or being in a high level division one program, but then the difficulty is, is actually taking advantage of those opportunities. So for any of our listeners, how would you provide some advice or what advice would you give to a young professional who is in a high level opportunity to really take advantage of their time within the organization? My advice is probably a little bit different than what most people would and should give you. Yeah. I would say most people would say, Hey, you know, here's the path, you know, do ABC. Yeah. I have just always been very confident in the, in the sense of like, I know what God's called me to do. Yeah. So I'm not afraid to just go introduce myself to anyone. Totally. I'm not afraid to go like straight up. I've walked over to people and they've just been like F off. And they've said it to my face and that's fine. It's basketball. Like yeah. <laughs> you get told that every, every week, like it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, but I've just always had a confidence of if that door doesn't open, that's okay. Mm-hmm. Because I wasn't supposed to be there, yeah. but I'm going to try. Like yeah, I, yeah. I learned pretty early coming here to Oklahoma city. I was very convinced that I was called to basketball. Mm. I was like, well, then I'm going to knock on every single door. And yeah. the one that opens, opens the ones yeah. that don't. That's okay. And that, that doesn't mean it wasn't sad. I mean, there was a stretch in 20, probably 17 and 18, or maybe 18 and 19, where I felt like I finished second in like mm. 10 NBA internships, basketball yeah. ops internships, GA spots back at like power five schools. And it was just second, 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 second. And I was like, God, how many times do I have to do this? Like, <laughs> so there are definitely like, there were hard days. Mm. Um, but I, my, my personal, my personal story is, I just knew I was supposed to be in it. Yeah. Therefore, even though it was sad when the doors closed or remained closed, like I had the confidence of like one day it would. Um, mm-hmm. So the, my advice is not a strategy. From like a planning standpoint, my advice is yeah. if you're called to it, it like be prepared to have some intestinal fortitude when it gets hard because mm. it will. Yeah. Like this is not supposed to be easy. If yeah. it was easy, it would be about us. Right. Exactly, And that's, that's the other thing about my story too. Every job I've had in basketball, I can point to, I didn't get that myself. Yeah. <laughs> like literally every single one. Absolutely. So while that's cool, it also comes with a lot of hard days. Mm. Um, so yeah, my advice is more being emotionally prepared to handle mm. things and not necessarily like an on the ground strategy, if you will. That's so well said, Derek. And I think the challenge of, you know, so many young professionals is it can often feel so defeating, kind of as you mentioned, right? You, there's 10 jobs you, you finished second place for, and it can feel like, man, is God really calling me to this? 
And so it, it, a question I thought of as well, and this is unscripted, but how did you know that God still wanted you in basketball, even though so many doors were closing? Yeah, I get asked, I get asked that one a lot too. Um, every, probably every four, five, six months, um, I would get into a place where I got really discouraged mm-hmm. and I would just ask God like, Hey, just give me one little glimpse to show me I am still headed the right direction. Yeah, It could be a conversation. It could be a text from somebody. It could be any, like anything. I remember one in particular, I was really grinding for months and just felt like nothing happened and nothing happened and nothing happened. Yeah. Job closed, job closed, you know, everything. I was like, this is, this is stupid. Yeah. <laughs> this is pointless. My, my, my wife, my now wife, we were dating long distance at the time. Mm-hmm. And it was just like, that was, that's emotionally hard in itself. We could do yeah. a whole podcast about long distance dating. Totally. Um, but like all that was happening at once. Yeah. I remember just asking God, like, you got to show me something because like I'm hurting. Mm. I flew to the Portsmouth Invitational in Norfolk, Virginia, showed up tired, spent my own money to go use vacation days. Mm. So the thing, be prepared, be prepared to do grind it in sports. Yeah. You don't use your vacation for a vacation. You use your vacation days for your side hustle. Yeah. So side, there's a side note there, yeah. but I showed up to Portsmouth and I didn't tell anybody I was going. And I showed up to pay for my ticket and an NBA scout that I had gotten to know already walked up to me as I was pulling out like a $10 bill to like pay for like a, you know, a day pass or whatever. And he handed me his credential and he was like, go ahead. He was like, I see you everywhere. Go ahead. Like, you don't have to pay for that. You good. Wow. And then he went and picked up another credential for himself. It's like he had seen me on the road enough times. He was like, you're good. I see you grinding. Like, just take this credential. I'll tell them I need another one. So I was able to sit with scouts that whole weekend Man. um in a part of the gym that's like roped off that had i paid the ten dollars and when i tell you relationships came out of that weekend oh my goodness like amazing. guys who at that time were with certain teams now i can think of multiple division one head coaches i can think mm. of think of two assistant general managers wow like that i got to know on that trip um and that was one where i was like okay god i didn't open that by myself yeah it wasn't because i was so good at this right it wasn't because i knew the right person it was again someone reaching a hand down to me when I didn't deserve it. Mm. So every six months, I would ask. I would really. It would get really hard. Yeah. Like just, just drop me something. Drop me a conversation. Have somebody text me. Let me run into somebody on the road yeah. um, to kind of know that like I was still on the right path. Absolutely, Derek. And I think it's really cool that you were consistently asking God, "Is this where you want me to be?" It takes a lot of humility, and I think that's a challenge within the sport industry. Is I think we can get tunnel vision to like. This is the only place I could ever be is in the sports world. But I think, you know, it's it's amazing that your story turned out to be, you know, exactly that of you're in sports and praise the Lord for that. But sometimes there's other doors that, that he wants us to enter. So love that testimony there. I think it's it's a truly a sign of, you know, God wanting you to be in this industry. I think it's a good follow-up as well for this next question. You, know, you spent multiple years with various scouting organizations, including Sports Info Solutions, Basketball News, Babcock Sports. I'd love to hear from you. I think it's a challenge for for young coaches and young scouts to know how can I be successful as a scout? How can I actually be successful in in coaching young men in the sport of basketball? So share with us what those experiences were like and how young people can be successful in the same industry. I think what's really important in sports is to understand that it's okay and also required Mm -hmm. to start on the bottom. Like you have to be okay starting on the bottom. And that's why, you know, a lot of the guys that I have grown to respect and become friends with in the league, like they started as college managers um, because that is the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, you get the polo, but you're also up at two, three in the morning doing stuff you don't want to do. Mm. And you do it because you love it and yeah. you see the end goal. So, you know, at all those organizations, like, so with Babcock Hoops, and then I actually went to Basketball News with Matt Babcock. So those kind of ended up blending into one for a while. Yeah, I met Matt at a Thunder game. Again, wow. another one of those things where people don't even know how I started working for Matt. Like, I was selling tickets to the Thunder. He came to Oklahoma City to watch RJ Hampton play preseason game. Mm. I saw that he was in in the gym, so I DM'd him on Twitter like, "Hey, I work here. I'm gonna have a break at halftime. Like, I know where you sit because I put your name tag there. Like, I'd love to shake your hand." Right. He's like. Oh, like, come on down, talk to him for 20 minutes. You know, here's my phone number. Middle of the night, about two weeks later, he calls me, like, middle of the night. Like, hello? He's like, hey, it's Matt Babcock. I was like, yeah, bro, like, I saved your number. Like, (laughs) I know who this is. This is clearly a butt dial. Yeah. And he was like, nah, man, I need an intern. Like, you ready to go? Wow. Yep. 
That's awesome. And That's awesome. Not because he couldn't, but or not because he didn't want to. His business was so fresh and fr- like new because he was an agent for years. He had just started his consulting business. He couldn't really pay me anything. Hmm. Um, he couldn't pay me for like eighteen months. I didn't care. Yeah. So I was like, I want this bad enough. You don't have to pay me, dog. Like you're going to open doors for me. I'm meeting people through you. That's worth more than any penny you could pay me. Yeah. And I think realizing one, it's necessary to start on the bottom. You have to, you think you can skip steps. It's going to be a rude awakening for you. Totally. Period. Yeah. Two, um, early on, it's not about the money. Hmm. Like the people, again, the doors that he's opened, the people that Matt has allowed me to meet through him on the road. Um, I would become family. Like, yeah. Every time I go to Denver, I stay at his house when we travel, like we travel together. Like, so <laughs> and now what's crazy is he's my NBA draft lead here at Cerebro. Like I was able to hire him with a contract. That's awesome. It was, it was complete like world flipping thing. Yeah. Um, but again, he was so good and gracious to me mm. that I think there's a lesson in that as well. Yeah. Like, yes, I had to be willing to, you know, be the nobody for a while, but also he was really good to me when he didn't have to. Mm. So now as I'm one of the older ones in the business, or I guess, quote older like i just turned 30 like <laughs> last week but yeah. older is in like i'm finally like maybe i have interns or or part-time is under me yeah. i remember how matt treated me yeah. so again as much as it is learning about the game training your eye actually being a good evaluator mm-hmm. it's about how good of an employee are you yeah. can you keep your mouth shut and do what you're asked mm-hmm. can you treat everybody with respect from the owner of the company to the janitor in the building you work because mm-hmm. like people will check on that stuff yeah. Um, and across every company I've worked with, like those are more important. And it sounds crazy. I'll hire you based off that stuff more than I will your eye. Mm. I can train you your eye. I can't train you to be a good person. That's so true. So true, brother. And I appreciate you sharing. I think that's that's really awesome advice because I think we can often get stuck on the the basketball things and, and really just being good at what we do and forgetting that personable aspect to the role of you know, when we're working in sports, we're actually servants more than anything else. I think that's the bottom line of it is we're serving the game, but we're also serving those around us. So I think it's an awesome perspective and really a cool testimony of, as well of, of of working with Matt and then having him work for you. I think that's a, a really awesome, you know, connection between you guys and being able to be together now at Cerebro. And Derek, I want to spend some time discussing the, the challenge you faced of being away from the game uh, just a, about a year ago. Um, of really having to step away from basketball, which was a challenging time for you. So if you don't mind sharing that testimony, I'd love to hear just, you know, really what was going on in that season of your life. So in July of last year, July of 2022, um, I will preface with saying I'm a very, I have always been the control freak planner when it comes to money. And I won't do this in life until this. My wife and I won't do this until we have this in place. Like Mm. that's been me to a T. And in July of last year, we, closed on our first home, found out we were pregnant with our first kid. And I was let go from my job in a 20 day span. (laughs) And so I got three kind of, uh, life changing yearly moments where they should each have their own year in about thin in right at three weeks. Um, and honestly, like it, it shook me as it would anybody. As I, I hope it would. You got to be crazy for that not to shake you. Yeah. For real. And, you know, at church a couple nights before, uh, I was at a men's night, which was which was amazing. Pastor Tony Foster came in and we didn't we do not know each other, came in and spoke over me. He was like, the, basically the words he said was, your job is to love your wife and I'm going to shift both of you. Wow. And that, wow. again, to a guy who has worked in sports and has been has made almost too much of his career. That was as equally exciting as it was scary. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, and then all this happened immediately. So wow. I started, you know, we took a family vacation right after to go see her parents in Carolina mm. and, you know, tell them about the baby, all this good stuff. And yeah. on the flight there, I felt like God told me, don't tell anybody you are jobless. Don't tell anybody. Wow. Like, Stop. So I had fired off maybe two or three texts to my closest basketball friends that knew Mm -hmm. or that would have wanted to know prior to kind of hearing that. And Catherine, I just really felt like God said, let me do it. Mm -hmm. Like, let me do it. Stop. Just if you think if you think that I will actually that I actually brought you to basketball, let me do it now. Mm -hmm. And again, for a control freak, that is difficult. So we moved into the house and it just really hit me over and over what Pastor Tony said. He said your job is to love your wife. 
Mm. And the more I heard that in my head, I thought, well, what if that literally is like my, like, what if I make that my job? Yeah. So she's newly pregnant, not feeling great, hungry, not hungry, all this fun stuff. Yeah. I just painted the whole house, moved us in every day. I would just grind on the house yeah. inside, outside. Um, I had gotten really out of shape uh, comparatively, like for where I'd like to be. I was on the road a lot last spring, was eating like crap, had put on some weight. I got back in the gym. I used to be a bookworm and I was able to get back to reading, you know, I was knocking out like a, you know, big book a week kind of thing. Wow. Um, and really just like a hard, it was like a detox, like a hard reset yeah. of my life. Wow. And every day I would tell God like, Hey, I'm running out of money. We just closed on the house and now I got doctor bills and like, this doesn't look good. Like yeah. you, <laughs> Hey, need you to, I need to see something cause it's, <laughs> it's getting tight. Yeah. And that was in like August. And this, this season ended up going for months. Um, wow. had talked with some NBA teams during that stretch who had reached out to me. I thought those doors were going to happen. Second, wow. second, second. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, this is, this is tough. Mm. Um, we had a family member at one point when money was getting really tight. We, again, family member did not know that this happened, sent us a check, said, Hey, you know, wow. God told me to send you this man. And what's crazy is on my first day of work with the new job at the end of this, that is the dollar amount we had in the bank. Wow. Like to the dollar. Man, that's incredible. That check is what was there. Yeah. Wow. So like he took us down to zero, mm. which again, but we never lacked. Wow. Um, wow. But I, what was what was really interesting is my our church, and we love our church here in Oklahoma City. Catherine is now actually the the director of the Child Development Center that wow. the church owns and runs, which is, she yeah. just started that like a month ago, which has been amazing. Yeah. Um, and the church is is growing and growing, and they needed some help on the property, 35 acres, and they only had one guy taking care of it middle of the summer. Like yeah. they couldn't do all that Monday to Saturday. Like they needed help. Totally. Sitting at the house, I was like, man, I'm I'm in pretty good shape again, but like I'm just kind of working out. For me now, <laughs> it's been three months. Like, I feel like I'm in a good spot. Yeah. Um, and I, I felt God tell me, if you will take care of my arena, I will take care of yours. Mm. Wow. So, okay. Powerful. Called the facilities buddy at the church. He's late 20s, great guy. I was like, yo, you need an extra hand? He was like, yeah. So I went out there, helped him with 35 acres, cutting down trees. Wow. Moving stuff, painting the property, pressure washing on big lifts and big rigs and all this stuff. Um, just doing manual labor for you know however many bucks an hour. Yeah. And I really had to come to the realization of if this is what God wants me to do, then this is what I'm going to do. Yeah. Um, which again, when you've worked for years to get into something as difficult as sports, that's hard. That's so hard. It, wow. it's, it's hard. And I say that on the other side now. I pray I don't ever have to do that again. Yeah. But if I do, you know, faith is like a workout. Absolutely. You do it once because you're going to have to do it again in some capacity. Like that's how this journey goes. Yeah. And um, about probably two weeks after going and helping out at the facility, I get a call from Ryan Gerardo, who's the CEO of Cerebro Sports. He said, hey, remember that job I told you about, like that we might not have in, you know, for another 18 months? I said, yep. He was like, can you start Monday? Wow. I said, yep. And then the job he offered me then was head of basketball when before we had discussed like a scout. Wow. So That's it was crazy. crazy. Um, I probably, I gained what I told the church. I told my pastor, I said, look, I gained the biggest jump, if you will, in title um, and authority, if you will, and, mm -hmm. you know, job structure, whatever word you want to say. I gained that. I moved to the highest in that area not after hmm. working really hard, but after not watching a basketball game for four months. Wow. That's um, so and that's just like, it's just another one of those things. Where I'm like, all right, God, did you opened this. And when people yeah. ask how I got here, it's not because I was so good at something. Right. Like I was just doing the last thing that I was told to do. Yeah. Um, like the story of David. Hey, look, <laughs> most of us today, 16 year old gets told, Hey, you're going to be King. You're looking around. You're like, we're going right now. Right? <laughs> like, let's go to the palace right now. Yeah. But the story is actually that God says, go do the last thing I told you to do. Mm. And like, I'll come get you. And that's really what kind of the summer of and fall of 2022 was for me and for my wife. And I have to give Catherine credit too. Like she never yeah. wavered. 
even when I started asking questions, she was like, we're gonna be okay. Wow. We're gonna be okay. So she's been steady, even <laughs> very pregnant. She was the steady one when I would get nervous <laughs> and yeah, I know it's a lot. That's and amazing. again, for listeners, I know that was long winded, but it's wild, uh, wild time last year. It's amazing, Derek. And I really appreciate you sharing. I think it's, it's so powerful for our listeners to hear your journey because it, it's not a, a straight arrow, right? There's so many challenges you face. And I think that's the reality of the sport industry. It, it's, it's not a straight arrow. It never will be. And it, it'll take you on a difficult journey. Oftentimes to your point, unpaid, you know, sometimes being out of a job for longer than you'd think. But I love how you pointed all back to the Lord, right? And him being your guide, right? And even when you land this position that, you know, is the, the highest promotion you've ever received, you give that glory back to God, which I think is incredible. And so for our listeners, I think a, a question that I love to hear you you answer is, what did the time away from the game teach you about your role as a husband and as a follower of Christ? I'd be curious to see how many listeners know the name Jonathan Charks. I would assume a lot. Yeah. Um, Charks had a massive influence on my life. That's amazing. Chark lives down in Dallas. Uh, we got to know each other in 2018 ish. Yeah. Found his blog online, emailed him. And I would go down probably once a quarter to Dallas and we would have lunch or dinner together yeah. and he'd speak into my life. You know, I try to help him with whatever he needed in his. Um, then again, it was really, really hard when he got sick. Mm. Um, about 10 days before he passed, I went down to Dallas and I hung out with him at, in the Baylor hospital Yeah, and he had lost, he had lost the, the capability to use his legs at mm. this point had really, really difficult time speaking. And again, that's hard for those who don't know. He's six, five, he's big, he's big dude. I'm six, four. He made me feel pretty yeah. small. Yeah. So to see him like in a hospital bed, really weak, mm. you know, couldn't really eat a whole lot, but I would try to talk about basketball because that's what we loved. Yeah. And he was like, Derek dog. He was like, it doesn't matter. Mm. It doesn't matter. I was like, I'm charged. Like, I know, I know it doesn't, I know it doesn't matter. And he was like, dude, like, I literally can't stress. He was like, it's just a game. Wow. And some people in basketball, like, wouldn't want me to hear me say that because that's my life and my career. I'm like, that's, I don't care. That's fine. Yeah. But, you know, during this time, it was very much like, keep, keep the important things important. Yeah. Like, he always told me, keep the important things first. Chark said, keep the, keep the important things first. Yeah. And that's why right now, as of today, I've shut down travel. My baby's baby's due in two and a half weeks mm -hmm. and I'm not willing to risk being the guy who's not here. <laughs> like yeah. again, my wife has let me do a lot of yeah. traveling, spending our money for years. So if she says, shut it down. It's time to shut it down. Absolutely. Um, cause she doesn't put demands on my career. She never has. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, something like got a lot of that from sharks, like seeing awesome. what's important in life, miss him very much. Um, and I'd say during the, especially the work gap last year, I had to answer the question for myself, who am I if I don't have basketball? Mm, that's and if you want to go to a pretty dark place pretty quick, sit there and ask yourself, if I don't have my career and I don't have money, who am I? Mm. And just and just sit in it. Wow. Just sit in it. Because you will you will realize what's important. Yeah. And so that was I think the biggest thing for me was it doesn't matter if for my career, if the rest of my life is taking care of 35 acres. Yeah. Again, do I, do I want that or crave for that? Like, no, <laughs> I want to work basketball forever. <laughs> yeah. Um, but at a certain point, I think God tests you. Mm. Absolutely. Well, is it still for you? Is it still for me or is it for you now? Mm. And, uh, I think that's just kind of a handful of things. Like, again, keeping the important things important. If that's a wife. Mm. If that's children, if you're not married or not in a relationship, find out what it is. Is it family? Is it the people that God's placed you around? Mm -hmm. Is it people you work with? Like always be something, but I would challenge people. Like if your career, if you're, if sports, if money, if it's all taken from you mm -hmm. and it's just you as a man or woman sitting on a couch, sitting, you know, sitting in your car at like, ask yourself that question Yeah, because you can really start to dig into some places of your mind and your uh, spirit that probably you haven't been to in a minute. Derek, that's, that's so powerful, brother, and really just makes me think of, you know, basketball and, and a career in sports is something that is not a bad thing to pursue, 
but it can't be the number one thing in, in your life. It has to be a, a realization that there is so much more to the meaning of life, and it comes back to, to God, and, and it comes back to the understanding of, of the relationship we have with Him and, and being a light for Him um, in, in every space that we're in. So I, that's so powerful, brother. And I think to your point, that question of if all these things were taken away, how would we really view our lives, right? Is our life still valuable? I think that reveals if, if the game is an idol or not. So that's that's awesome, brother. It's powerful, really powerful stuff. And I think it's important for our listeners to really sit in that, as you said. And Derek, I want to transition back to Cerebro. It's amazing that you received that promotion, right? You said it was the, the biggest promotion you've ever had in your career. And it came off a, a few months of being out of the game. How did you handle being promoted to to such a role of, of leadership, uh, really being after being away from the game for so long? How did you navigate that challenge, and did you feel ready for that? I did for a handful of reasons. One, again, that confidence just immediately jolted back into me. Yeah. You know, when God places you where you're supposed to be, it's like, oh, not only fleshly, I'm good at this, yeah. <laughs> but there's also a, and he just put me here Yeah, and it's not for no reason. That's so weird. I feel capable of doing this job. Yeah. Um, the other part is Cerebro. And again, I think even now we're at 12, uh, maybe 10 or 11 full timers. So it's a fairly small operation, um, but it's people I have known for at least two or three years and have trusted and have good relationships with. Wow. Like these guys are, these are, these are good people. Um, kind of top to bottom. And that really made it easy too, where some of them, it was obvious that I wasn't doing the same basketball work anymore. Like they didn't know what, but from a public perspective, they could tell like he's not doing anything. Yeah. And I never got asked about it. I wasn't yeah. questioned. I wasn't, mm-hmm. you know, grilled for that at all. Like it was really, really smooth. I started, they said, what direction are we going? I said, here's what, you know, I, I would do ABC and um, they just made it really easy. So honestly, just being a being a group of good people already that I had known before yeah. made it super easy. That's awesome, Derek. And I think too, you know, I heard you mention this of, you know, God had put you there, and so that gave you a sense of confidence that, you know, hey, this is something that I'm ready to do. I think that's encouraging for our listeners as well. That if God puts you there, you'll be ready for it, and that's that's an awesome reality. And Derek, lastly, I love to close. I know you shared a lot of awesome advice already, but. For our listeners, whether they're pursuing a career in basketball or a career in another um, area of the sport industry, what is some advice you would give a young professional who is really trying to find success in this industry? Two, two come to mind. One is you know more of a business professional, and one is a kind of the spiritual journey part of it. Yeah. Um, from a business professional stand, like advice standpoint, I learned early on get to know everybody in your organization top to bottom and treat every intern as if they're going to be your boss. Yeah. I approach every relationship with one day I'm going to have to ask them for a job. Yeah. One day you're going to work for them because in sports, you never know. Yeah. Years of experience don't matter. Uh, who you were with before don't matter. Yeah. Like there's an example. There was a guy that I worked with when I was in retention at the thunder. He was a season. Um, it was like a inside sales rep. Yeah. You know, doing doing the grunt work. That is tough work and I don't wish it on anybody, but it's yeah. a door into sports for a lot of people. Totally. And he was a grinder. Um a lot of the sales and, and retention people, like again, they were just the newbies down in the low level works. So, like no one really took time to go meet this group of people. Mm-hmm. You know, every year there'd be like a new crop of salespeople. Yeah. I made it a point to go and be friends with every single one. That's awesome. Every single year. I was like, you never know. Yeah. You never know who's gonna pop off. And uh this guy now is it'll give it away if I say the team. I don't want anybody to go look it up. So uh, he is now the director of like premium sales for a MLB team. Wow. And there have been people that I've worked with since be like, hey, you know, can I get a job there? I'm like, you know who your boss would be, right? <laughs> yeah. It's the person you didn't talk to. Yeah. Like I'm cool with him. <laughs> yeah. um, and that's just very important. Like it doesn't matter what part of the business you are in. Totally. Every single person, treat them like one day they will be your boss because it's awesome. You, you, you do not know. Mm. Um, on the other side of it, you have to be okay. Again, this is so difficult. This is a, like a practice what I preach, but I hope I don't have to practice it again situation. Yeah. If God put you there, he has the authority to take you out. Yeah. 
like and and people you just need to accept that now again it's good the bible says he is not going to harm us he's his plans are good yeah that doesn't mean they will feel good hmm. you know there are going to be times where like god i don't like this why am i here why did you guide me here hmm. like it's it's not always easy yeah. but you have to know that going in and if you have the stomach to know that going in yeah you can be you can be just like hugely successful awesome. you'll be successful in whatever you do yeah um but it's, it's just not always going to be easy some doors are going to close people are going to do whatever they can to get ahead of you hmm. um you're not going to get certain jobs yeah. you're probably not going to get paid much early on um god puts you in a job he can remove it just as quickly yeah. and that doesn't mean he changed his mind but yeah. that's a part of the plan you couldn't see mm. so and again it comes a little bit from experience i also hope to an extent i don't have to do those things anymore <laughs> yeah. but again in basketball like it's a volatile industry mm -hmm. i know at some point again in my career i'll be jobless for a little while yeah it's basketball the best coaches in the world the best execs in the world the best scouts in the world they all go jobless yeah. it's a brutal industry um being able to have that stomach so treat people the right way while you're there mm -hmm. and then again you gotta you gotta be able to have the strength to know that it will be up and down and if you're okay with that you will be successful. Yeah. So well said on both fronts, Derek. And I think too, I love your last point of, you know, we really have to trust the Lord to be in the driver's seat. You know, I always tell people that we have to allow God to take control of the wheel. I know that's such a, so it's, it's a song and we say it so often when Jesus take the wheel, but if God's not driving, then we're going to try to outdo his plan. Right. And we're going to mess that up for ourselves and not trust what he's doing. Um, and eventually take that out on God, right? Which hurts the relationship with Him. And so I think to your point of let God be in control wherever He wants us is where we have to be. And then as well, it is a brutal industry, right? Some of the best coaches that I've worked with are currently jobless, which is you know hard for me to see. I'm like, oh, well, you know, teams are missing out on such a great guy, but it's a reality of the industry. So, you know, Derek, I think that's very applicable advice, and, and our listeners will, will definitely benefit from that. And Derek, I'm so thankful for your time today. I appreciate you sharing uh, really your journey. I think it's, it's amazing to hear what God has, has been doing and will continue to do in your life. And we wish you the best of luck. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. I always enjoy talking about it. Absolutely, brother. If you want to get involved with Uncommon Sports Group and the mission that we are on to help you navigate the sport industry as followers of Christ, apply for our academy on our website at Uncommon SG. Dot org. That's UncommonSG.org. Be sure to catch new episodes of the Uncommon Podcast every Thursday at midnight Eastern Time, as well as the full video episodes on our YouTube channel. Until next time, we pray that you will strive to be uncommon by glorifying the name of God in whatever you may do. See you next week.